All right, for problem 11, now we wanna think about deriving the full formula. So I'm just gonna tell you in advance, this does take quite a while because we're just gonna do it using algebra. Some people prefer to do this using a geometric approach. That's a little bit quicker. So the first thing is, I see that I have my equation, ax plus by plus c equals zero, given in what we call general form. So that's what most books would call that. Then my point is just labeled as x sub one comma y sub one. So the strategy will be the same as what we looked at in problem 10 when we did that using the longer approach. So first, let me write out what we would expect. So the distance between this line and this point is equal to the absolute value of ax sub one plus b y sub one plus c, and this is over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So a very easy formula to work with, but the idea here is we're gonna show where it comes from. Okay, so to think about the steps that would be involved, let's look at a simple sketch. So first off, this line in yellow, that's the line that you're given. So this is the ax plus by plus c equals zero. And then the point that you're given, that's gonna be right here where we call this x sub one comma y sub one. Now you'll notice that we have this line segment here and we have this other point here. So where does that come from? Well, basically the shortest distance from this point that you're given, again, the x sub one comma y sub one, to the line that you're given, again, the ax plus by plus c equals zero, is the perpendicular line segment that joins that point in that line. So that's gonna introduce this point right here which we're going to call x sub two comma y sub two. Now notice that I said that this guy was a perpendicular line segment. So that means this guy right here is a right angle or 90 degree angle. So what I'm actually going to do is extend this a little bit to make it easier to understand. So I'm gonna say that these two lines are perpendicular and the point of intersection, this point right here, is gonna be that x sub two comma y sub two. So let's think about how we can get this guy, we would already know this guy. So what we're gonna need to do is basically set up a system of equations and find this x sub two comma y sub two. That's gonna be the goal. And then we can plug into the distance formula to find the distance between this point right here, this x sub one comma y sub one, and this point right here, this point of intersection, this x sub two comma y sub two. Again, this right here to this right here, that's the distance between this point that's given and the line. That's all we're finding here. So to get started, I'm gonna write my equation ax plus by plus c equals zero in slope intercept form. So that just means I'm gonna solve it for y. So to do that, I'm gonna subtract ax away from each side of the equation. I'm also going to subtract c away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna cancel, this is gonna cancel. And so you're going to have by is equal to negative ax and then minus c. So what I'm going to do at this point is divide everything by b. And let me slide down here a little bit. So this would cancel. And basically you would have y is equal to, let's write this as negative a over b, then times x, and then minus c over b. I'm gonna grab this real quick, come to a fresh sheet. I'm gonna paste this in, and I'm just gonna call this equation one, just for reference sake, because we're gonna end up solving a system of equations. The next thing is you need to figure out the equation for this line right here. So we need to figure out what is the equation of this line. So with perpendicular lines, the product of the slopes, that's gonna be negative one. So let's go back and this slope right here is negative A over B. So if I said negative A over B times some unknown slope M is equal to negative one, well, basically you could multiply both sides by negative B over A, so times negative B over A. And so this right here, is gonna cancel and give you one. So M, let me write a one there, is equal to negative times negative is positive, so this is just B over A. So that's gonna be the slope for my perpendicular line. Okay, let me get rid of this, and let's call this equation two. So we're gonna say this is Y minus Y sub one is equal to M the slope times the quantity X minus X sub one. So this X sub one and this Y sub one, again, that's the point that you're given. If you go back, that's this point right here that's gonna be on this line. So that's what we're using. And then we know the slope, so that's why we're using something called point slope form. I'm gonna plug in for M since I know what that is. So that is B over A. And then I'm just going to solve this for Y. So you could add Y sub one to both sides of the equation. So this right here is going to cancel away. And what you're gonna have is Y is equal to B over A times X and then minus B over A 
times x sub 1. So I'm just distributing this into each guy. And then plus y sub 1. Let me get rid of this. And maybe I can bring this down a little bit. So let me change my color. So this is equation 2. All right, so to solve this system, I'm going to use the substitution method. So I'm going to take this right side of equation 2. So this guy right here. And I'm going to plug that in for y in equation 2. 1. y is equal to this, so that means I can plug this in for y here. So basically that's going to give me b over a times x minus b over a times x sub 1 plus y sub 1, and this equals negative a over b times x minus c over b. So let me grab this real quick, and let me come down here and paste this in. Now we have to think really carefully about what we're trying to do. You see that you have an x here and an x here, but then you also have an x sub 1 here. So this confuses a lot of people. If you go back to your little sketch, what's happening is you're trying to solve for x in this particular case. What you're trying to obtain is the x value for this point right here of intersection that point that basically solves the system, it's where the two lines will intersect, and so it's the solution for the system. So right there, we've named this as x sub 2, but over there, when we solve for this, it's just x. So I'm going to solve for that. Eventually, I will rename it to x sub 2. For right now, we're just going to call it x. Just note that it's different than this x sub 1. That is from that point that we were given. So if we go back, that's this guy right here. So those are different. Okay, so it's very important. This is where people get tripped up. All right, so with that being said, let's get started with the solution here. What I wanna do is get this over to the left and then get all this stuff over to the right. So I would add A over B times X to both sides of the equation, and this will cancel away. Let me actually do this in different lines. So let me write this as A over B times x, and then plus b over a times x, and then minus b over a times x sub 1 plus y sub 1, and this equals negative c over b. Now, this x and this x, again, that's what I'm trying to solve for, so leave those on the left. This x sub 1, again, that's different. You're going to get that to the other side. So I'm going to add b over a times x sub 1 to both sides of this equation. Let me put this up here where it goes. And then I'm going to subtract y sub 1, let me just do that over here, away from each side of the equation. So this guy right here is going to cancel away, and so is this guy. So that gives me a over b times x plus b over a times x is equal to, over here, I have negative c over b, and then plus b over a times x sub 1, and then minus y sub 1. I am trying to solve for x here. So what can I do? You might be thinking, how in the world are we going to solve for x? Remember earlier in the course, we talked about solving literal equations, and we had a strategy for this. Basically, you would factor the x out. So you're going to pull that out in front of some parentheses, and maybe that could be a little bit better, like that. And so inside the parentheses, you would have a over b, so a over b, and then plus b over a. And you could write this in a different way. You could put the x over here. It really doesn't matter. x is multiplied by this. So basically, this is the coefficient of x. So we'll say this equals negative c over b, and then plus b over a, and then times x sub 1, and then minus y sub 1. I'm actually going to grab this and go to a new sheet so we don't run out of room. And what I'm going to do is divide both sides of the equation by this a over b plus b over a, Again, that's the coefficient of x. It's just like if I had 3x is equal to 6, and I divide both sides of the equation by 3, well, that's all I'm doing here. I'm just dividing both sides of the equation by the coefficient of x. Well, a over b plus b over a, that's the coefficient of x. So let me get rid of this, and let me divide this over here. So this is a over b plus b over a. So we're going to have this as x is equal to negative c over b, and then plus b over a times x sub 1 minus y sub 1, and this would be over your a over b, and then plus b over a. Maybe that a could be a little bit better there. All right, so at this point, what you want to do is simplify as much as you can. Now, you could come down here and get a common denominator and take that approach, but I think the quickest way to do this is to use our knowledge of simplifying complex fractions. So we'll think about this part up here as the numerator of the complex fraction, and this down here as the denominator of the complex fraction. And so think about all the denominators involved in this problem. You have a b, you have an a, 
you have a B and an A. So the least common denominator is A times B. So all you have to do, let me unhighlight everything here. You're just gonna multiply the numerator and denominator. Let me actually just slide this over here so this fits. So X equals, multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by that LCD, which is AB. So I'm gonna go AB over AB. So I'm just multiplying by one, I'm not changing anything. So let's go X is equal to, you're gonna have AB times this up here, so negative C over B plus B over A times X sub one minus Y sub one. Down here, you're gonna have this AB times this quantity A over B plus B over A. And just distribute this in. So this is gonna get distributed here and this is gonna get distributed here. So we'll say that this is going to be X is equal to, you'll have AB times negative C over B and then plus AB times B over A times X sub one, and then minus AB times Y sub one. This would be over. Down here, you're gonna have AB times A over B. Maybe this A could be a little bit better there. And then we're gonna have plus AB times your B over A. And let me make that a little bit better there. Now thinking about this, we can see a lot of stuff's gonna cancel. So this B with this B, this A with this A, and then nothing over here, down here you have this B with this B, and then this A with this A. So let's go ahead and write this as X is equal to, A times negative C would be negative AC. You could also write negative CA, whatever you wanna do. And then I'm gonna put plus, B times B is B squared, so B squared times X sub one, and then minus, you'll have A, B, Y sub one. This would be over, you have A times A, that's A squared, and then plus B times B, that's going to be B squared. So that would be my X. Again, eventually this is gonna be called X sub two. So let me grab this real quick and come back up here and just paste this here. So I know my X value that solves this system of equations. So that's the first thing. Now I need to figure out the Y value that's going to solve the system of equations. So I can have the X comma Y, and then again, I'll rename that as X sub two comma Y sub two, and then I can plug into the distance formula. Now to find the Y value that I'm looking for, what I'm gonna do is plug the X value that I have in for X in either equation one or two. Obviously equation one is easier to work with. So we're gonna take this right here, which is what X is equal to, and plug it in right there. I'm not gonna be able to fit this all on the screen. So I'm going to have to slide down a little bit and say Y is equal to negative A over B. So that's coming from right there. And then for X, I'm plugging this in. I'm gonna do that in a moment. And then out here, let me just wrap this with parentheses temporarily. We're gonna have minus C over B. Okay, so hopefully you're clear on what we're doing. So let me get rid of this highlighting here and also here. I'm just gonna slide down. And what I'm gonna do is actually move this down. So this is minus C over B. And I'm just gonna copy this. So this is times this guy right here. So I'm gonna try to do this as cleanly as possible. Let me move this down here. I'm gonna move the Y down there. So we would have negative AC plus B squared X sub one minus A B Y sub one. And let me move this out here. So minus C over B. And then this is over your A squared plus B squared. And all we're gonna do here is just simplify. We already have Y equal something. So we just wanna make this as simple as we can. So this right here, I'm gonna multiply negative A by each term here. So let me actually show this. So y is equal to, basically I'm gonna say this is negative a times negative ac plus b squared x sub one minus a b y sub one. So this guy is going to get distributed to each guy inside the parentheses. And then down here, you would have b times the quantity a squared plus b squared. I'm not gonna distribute this because you're gonna to have to factor it back out if you do. So just leave the denominator alone here. So then minus, you have C over B, and I'll say this is Y is equal to negative A times negative AC, that's positive A squared C. And then negative times positive is negative. A times B squared X sub one would be A B squared X sub one. And then negative times negative is positive. A times A is A squared. And then basically you just have B, Y sub one. So then you have minus C over B. Let me put my denominator down here. This is B times the quantity A squared plus B squared. Let me slide this over here and see if I can fit this. So this will be multiplied by your A squared plus B squared. 
So barely fit that on the screen. So a squared plus b squared. So let me come down here and basically say that y is equal to a squared c minus a b squared x sub one plus a squared b y sub one. And then basically this is where it gets a little tricky. What I would do here, this whole thing is being subtracted away. So you have to be very, very careful. I would write this as minus, and I would put some brackets here, and then say C times the quantity A squared plus B squared like this. It's very easy to make a sign mistake here, because again, you have to remember that this whole thing right here is being subtracted away. So let me put this over. You have a common denominator. It's B times the quantity A squared plus B squared. So B times the quantity A squared plus B squared. I'm basically going to first write this, and I think I can just erase this, and say this would be a squared c plus b squared c. In other words, this is going to get distributed here. Let me just write another line. I don't want to lose anybody. So y is equal to a squared c minus a b squared x sub 1 plus a squared b y sub 1. And then let me put minus, put my brackets here. So this would be distributed. So it would be a squared C and then basically plus B squared C. The reason you have those brackets there is so that minus gets distributed. In other words, you can think about this as plus a negative one and distribute that negative one to each guy. And I think we're safe to do this now. Basically, that's going to change the sign of each of these guys. So this becomes a minus and this becomes a minus. So it's very important to have those brackets or maybe another set of parentheses or whatever you want there to make sure that you end up with negative a squared c and then a negative b squared c. So then let me put this over b times the quantity a squared plus b squared. What you're going to notice here is that you have this a squared c and this negative a squared c. That's going to cancel and become zero. So I'm just going to line this out with this. Now, if I look at what's left, let's go ahead and say that y is equal to negative a b squared x sub one plus a squared b y sub one minus b squared c. And this is all over b times the quantity a squared plus b squared. So there's one other thing we're going to do. And basically, we're going to factor out a b from the numerator. So notice here you have b squared, and you have b and then b squared here, and you have a b down here. So we'll have y is equal to, I'll put my b out in front of some parentheses, you'll have negative a b x sub one, and then plus you're going to have a squared y sub one, and then minus, you're going to have b, c. Okay, let's put this over. You have your b times the quantity a squared plus b squared. So this would cancel with this. And so what that is going to give us is a final y is equal to, you have a negative a, b, x sub 1 plus a squared y sub 1 minus b, c. And this is all over your a squared plus b squared. So let me grab this and I'll paste this in. So this is going to be our y. What is this x and what is this y? We just solved a system of linear equations. And if we go back, this right here is the point of intersection. We just found the x value and the y value. All I'm gonna do for the purposes of deriving this formula, I'm gonna call this x sub two comma y sub two because I'm gonna plug into the distance formula. So I'm gonna have this point right here and this point right here. So that's what I'm trying to do. So if we go back, I'm gonna now label this as x sub two and y sub two. So I'm just changing the labeling. I know a lot of people get confused by that, but basically it's just so we can plug into the distance formula. All right, so now what we're gonna do is plug into the distance formula. This is gonna be extremely hard to fit on the screen. Let me come down here to a new page. So we know that distance between two points on the coordinate plane is the square root of, you would say x sub two minus x sub one quantity squared, plus we have y sub two minus y sub one quantity squared. You are going to plug in for x sub two and y sub two. So we have that up here, just coming back, here's x sub two, here's y sub two. I'm gonna take one of these at a time. So I'm just gonna grab this one, copy it, and come down here, and I'm gonna paste this right here. And I'm only gonna work on this part right here. So basically I'm gonna say this is x sub two, and then minus x sub one, and this is quantity squared. So I'm just gonna do this, simplify it, we'll come back and update this, and then I'll do this one separately. Let me go ahead and grab this real quick, come down here and paste this in. All right, so the idea here, let me actually scoot this down a little bit because you're gonna need some room. You wanna get a common denominator. 
So I'm gonna multiply this by a squared plus b squared, or actually, let me wrap this like this. I think it's a little bit better to do it like that. So this would be over a squared plus b squared. Okay, so when you do that, basically you're gonna have negative ac plus b squared x sub one minus a b y sub one. And then just like I did previously, I'm gonna put minus and put some brackets here, and I'll just show this as x sub one times the quantity a squared plus b squared like this. Close that down because this whole thing is being subtracted away. So you have to be very, very careful there. So let me close this down and then put that this is squared. Let me make that a little bit better here. And this right here is all over the common denominator of a squared plus b squared. What we're gonna do is say this is equal to, so let me distribute this in like that. You'll have a negative ac plus b squared x sub one minus a b y sub one, and then minus, let me put these brackets here. This would be a squared x sub one, and then plus b squared x sub one. Okay, let me close that down. Now, at this point, this negative, again, would be distributed. You can always put this as a plus negative one and show it like this if it's easier for you, but at the end of the day, both of these will just be a minus. So there'll be a minus here and a minus here. Let me close that down, and we're gonna square this and let's put this over a squared plus b squared. At this point, you'll see that you have b squared x sub one and negative b squared x sub one, so you can cancel those. So let me go ahead and cancel this one with this one. And so now what you're looking at, let me slide down here a little bit, is going to be negative ac minus a b y sub one minus a squared x sub one. Let me wrap this real quick. And we're gonna square this, and this is over a squared plus b squared. I want you to notice that there's an a here, an a here, and an a here, and there's also a negative or a minus, a minus, and a minus. So that means I can pull out a negative a. And I'm gonna write this as negative a being pulled out, and then times what's left would be c plus b times y sub one, plus you'd still have an a times x sub one. So I just pulled out a negative A from each guy. So that leaves you with a positive C and then a plus BY sub one and then a plus AX sub one. Now, you could reorder this and I recommend it so it makes it easier to understand what's going on. You could really say that this is AX sub one plus BY sub one plus C. Remember, you can add in any order. So I'm just gonna change that now. So this is AX sub one plus BY sub one plus C. And let me put this over your a squared plus b squared, and then this is squared. So what I'm gonna do here is use my rules of exponents. So basically, let's say I had something like x, y over z, and this whole thing was squared. I could say this is x squared times y squared over z squared. So that's the same thing here. Remember, this is multiplication. So basically, what I can do is say legally that this is equal to negative a being squared, and then times this ax sub one plus by sub one plus c being squared over this a squared plus b squared being squared, okay? Now, this right here, realize that if it's the negative of a, this is wrapped and this is squared, this is the same thing as a squared, right? So basically you could say, let me do this off to the side so nobody's lost. You could say negative a squared is equal to negative one squared times a squared, which just equals a squared. Okay, you could show it like that. A lot of people just eyeball that and say, okay, well, I know the negative is gonna go away because it's being squared. And let me change this over to a squared like we just discussed. And I'm gonna actually have to fit that in there somehow. All right, so I went ahead and just used MathJax to make a little image. So it's a lot cleaner and easier to see what I have here versus me trying to squeeze that in with my handwriting. So we have simplified this part right here. Remember, this was x sub two, minus x sub one quantity squared. We wanna do the same thing for this guy over here. So y sub two minus y sub one quantity squared. I'm gonna go up and grab my y sub two. So let's get that real quick and let's come down here and just paste this in. So this is y sub two and I wanna subtract away this y sub one. And of course I'm gonna wrap this and I'm going to go quantity squared. So let's go ahead and grab this real quick and we'll come down here and let's see if we can simplify this. So the first thing is I wanna get a common denominator. 
Let me just slide this down. I'll put it in in a second. So I'm going to multiply this by a squared plus b squared. And this would be over a squared plus b squared. Let me close this back down and say this is squared. Okay, let's put equals here. And then I'll put this in. So you're going to have negative a b x sub 1 plus a squared y sub 1 minus b c. Now here's where, again, you need to be really careful. This whole thing is being subtracted away. So what I would do is say that you have minus, and you can use brackets or parentheses, whatever you want to do, then put this in here. So y sub 1 times the quantity a squared plus b squared. Close that down. And then we're going to close down the brackets. So I can just write this over the common denominator, a squared plus b squared. Okay, let me slide down a little bit. Let's close this down here and say this is squared. All right, at this point, you would want to distribute this in to each guy inside of the parentheses. So let's say this equals negative a, b, x sub 1 plus a squared y sub 1 minus b, c. And then for this guy, you have this minus in front of these brackets. This right here is going to be a squared y sub 1 and then plus b squared y sub 1. The purpose of the brackets, again, is to remind you that you've got to distribute that minus or say this negative one is going to be distributed to each guy. So at the end of the day, both of those are going to have a minus sign in front. So this would be a minus and this would be a minus. I didn't mean to get rid of that. So let me draw that back in. So then this would be over this common denominator of a squared plus b squared. OK, let me put in some parentheses here. And this, of course, is squared. At this point, it's not that bad. You notice that you have a squared y sub 1, and then you have a negative a squared y sub 1. So those are going to cancel. So let me show this as canceling with this. And then let me write this down here. We'll say this equals negative a b x sub 1 minus b c, and then minus b squared y sub 1. This is all over a squared plus b squared. Let me wrap this, and this is going to be squared. What you would notice here is that you could pull out a negative b from the numerator. Here's a negative, here's a negative, here's a negative, here's a b, here's a b, here's a b squared, but let me just highlight the b. So basically, you are going to pull that out. Let me circle that and circle that and circle that, okay? So you're going to pull that out. And actually, if you want to make that crystal clear, you could write that as b times b like this and then circle that. All right, so we'll say this is equal to, in the numerator, pull out the negative b. So I'm gonna pull out a negative b. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put, you'd have a positive ax sub one. So ax sub one, pull out the negative b, I'd have a plus c. Pull out the negative b, you'd have a plus by sub one. Now I would reorder this and put by sub one first, like this, and then plus c, close that down. And then this would be over this a squared plus b squared. So again, all I did was pull out a negative b from the numerator. Now, let's close this down and square it. At this point, I'm going to use my rules of exponents. Again, x, y over z. If that was squared, this is x squared times y squared over z squared. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. Remember, this is multiplication. Let's say this equals negative b squared and then times this quantity ax sub 1 plus by sub 1 plus c, and this is quantity squared, over, you're going to have this quantity, so a squared plus b squared being squared. Now again, with this guy, this negative b being squared, you can legally write that as b squared. So I'm just going to delete that and put that as b squared. Now let's come back up and let me paste this in here. So this is going to get plugged in right there. So once again, I just used MathJax to make a nice clean image. It's a lot better than me trying to squeeze this in with my handwriting. And basically at this point, it's very easy to see what you're going to do. You have a common denominator. So I'm just going to say the distance is equal to the square root of, I'm going to have a squared times the quantity ax sub 1 plus by sub 1 plus c, and this is squared, plus your b squared times the quantity ax sub 1 plus b y sub 1 plus c, and this is quantity squared. Let me move this down here. This is over, again, I have a common denominator, so it's a squared plus b squared quantity squared. At this point, I want you to notice that you have this right here that is exactly the same as this right here. 
Okay, so those are the same. So you can factor that out. So basically what you would have is the distance is equal to the square root of, this gets pulled out because it's common. So let me put this out here. So a x sub one plus b y sub one plus c, and this is quantity squared. And then this is gonna be times what's left. Well, if I pulled this out, I would have a squared left. So let me put a squared. And then plus, if I pulled this out, I would have b squared left. And then this is over. You have this a squared plus b squared. I didn't put that in there, so squared. And then quantity squared. At this point, you'll notice that this would cancel with one of these. So that gives me d, or the distance is equal to the square root of, now you have this ax sub one plus by sub one plus c, quantity squared over, now you have one of these. So you can just write a squared plus b squared. Maybe this could be a little bit better. So let me do that like that. At this point, you're going to use your rule where basically if you have the square root of, let's say x over y, this is the square root of x over the square root of y. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do. So I'll just say d is equal to the square root of this quantity a x sub one plus b y sub one plus c being squared over, we're gonna have the square root of a squared plus b squared. For this one right here, remember in the formula, we have the absolute value bars. So where does that come from? Remember earlier in the course, we said if we had something like the square root of negative two being squared, well, negative two is squared first, so that gives me positive four, and then the square root of four, so the square root of four would be two. So basically, this is equal to the absolute value of what's inside here. So the absolute value of negative two, which is two. Another way you can put this is, you could say that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, and that's what we're gonna use here. So we have the square root of something squared. So what we're gonna do is replace this and say that the distance is equal to the absolute value of a x sub one plus b y sub one plus c. So just applying that rule, a little bit more complicated, but that's what we're doing. Then this is over, you have the square root of a squared plus b squared, and so now we have our formula. A lot easier just to work through a typical example than to derive this formula, but sometimes the teacher will make you do this just to get a lot of algebra practice, and if you have to, then you can look at this video, and I would recommend if you went through the whole process with me step by step, wait a few days and let it not be as fresh, and then try to do it on your own again, and then you can come back to the video if you need some help.